everyone welcome back to my channel today I'm continuing in my series of swing cards and this is the original swing card where it completely flips to the other side so this is a really good one for photographs and things like that so it completely flips over I'm going to explain to you how to do it with a paper trimmer or craft knife and ruler and also with a die cutting machine because you have to do partial die cuts and I think it's important to show you how to do that the other thing to explain is that I'm going to tell you how to do these so that your topper ends up dead center of your card okay so whatever size card you want to do I'm also going to explain that as well now this one here has a one inch flip flap okay both of them do actually and that's how I'm going to describe it today so if you want an end card of seven by five which is what this is you've got an inch flip flap there so you need to add on two inches to your initial cardstock so you're not cutting it seven by five you're cutting it nine by five and the same for this one this is the popular five and a half by four and a quarter in the US and what you need to do is you need to cut your cardstock to seven and a half by four and a quarter because you're going to lose those two inches there where it folds over so you can see that's an extra two inches so you need to do that now if you've got a topper and you think it might fall over because it's a bit bigger and you're making a bigger card then what you need to do is add on double whatever your flip flap is going to be so you can see there I've got one inch so if you wanted this to stick out to give that card more stability and say you want it two inches okay so what you need to do is double the two by four and then your starting block won't be five and a half it'd be five and a half plus four so it's nine and a half this one we're doing an inch so seven and a half I hope you understand that so whatever that fold is there that center mark if that's an inch you need to add on two inches to how you want your finished card to be okay so five and a half add on two inches seven and a half if you want it one and a half five and a half add on three inches is eight and a half doesn't really matter about the, the um, depth of it this way the height of the card it's all about the flip flap and the width of your card that's where the folds get done so I'm showing you how to do it dead center like I said so I think we'll start today with this one we're going to do the die cutting first so that you get to grips with the partial cutting so partial cutting means you're not putting your die completely through the machine so if you've got an electronic machine your dies have to hang out the edge because you can't stop it from going through and I prefer hand machines for this technique I think it's a lot easier and that's how I'm going to explain it to you so what I've done is I've cut down my four and a quarter by seven and a half okay because I've got my extra two inches now with this one my pattern the flowers are going up that way but when I go onto my scoreboard I'm going to just move that slightly and bring in my scoreboard so when I go onto my scoreboard what I want to do is make that um halfway so we and flip it over I'll explain it as I do it because that makes no sense let me just move that again this is why I need to do the die cutting one because there's just not enough room here honestly do you know what? I don't think you can ever have a big enough craft room, can you? Ever. If I did, I'd fill it and just keep filling it and filling it. So what we've got there then is we've got that one. I'm going to have to move this die cut machine completely out of the way. Sorry, guys. I'll just bring this in now so you can see it. So you can see it's seven and a half. Now to get your um, card dead centre, you need to know what half of it is. So seven and a half, half of that is going to be three and three quarters, I hope. <laughs> So three and three quarters is there. So what you need to do is just make a little mark there. But you're going to come this way. So whatever you want, you know, we're doing it an inch because we want it to end up at five and a half. So we're only doing an inch. So we mark it three and three quarters and then we mark it two and three quarters going towards the front of the card. OK, so it's really important that it goes to the front of the card. So two and three quarters there, two and three quarters and then halfway mark is three and three quarters okay so you're only marking it now turn it over and when you have to flip it this way your card's going to be upside down okay so you can see your marks there now what I'm going to do is take the die cut that I'm going to use I'll just grab that now where are you I moved everything didn't I so I'm going to need that as well that's hidden I just don't have enough room I really don't so I'm using the larger die cut because that's going to be my matting and layering die. And what you need to do is you need to line up to the two and three quarters. So not the halfway, the inch to the left. And because your card's upside down, 
but remember that so if there was a pattern down there and you wanted it higher so you got a taller card just pick it up and think yeah that's the top exaggerate it put it back down and then put it wherever you needed it but we're going to put ours in the center or near as near as a can really i'm going to do it by eye i have got a mark over here but i'm not going to use it <laughs> i sound like a rebel don't i so what i'm going to do for you guys actually is do it with a pencil so you can see now you can rub out pencils so and this is the back of your card and i'll tell you why you're doing the back of the card as we get there so just get this into the center so we've got two and three quarters and you can score down to where your die is going to sit and that's a really good thing to do so there and then again at three and three quarters up to where your die sit in and at the end you will finish it right to be close now i'm going to make that a pencil mark so that you can see what i'm doing next so now i'm going to take some tape which i did have and it's probably on my oh, there's a bit there and i'm going to tape it down to where i want it now your middle of your die you need symmetrical dies the middle of your die has to be on that line okay so it has to be on there so just tape it down um i think i'll do it on the outside because that is the outside of the card isn't it just grab another bit of tape and just so uh, this is obviously reusable tape not sellotape because it'll be stuck forever then i want you to line your card back up on your scoreboard or on a mat whatever you're using and just butt this but a piece of card that's straight up against the side and what you'll find that even here sometimes it is a bit skew with even though you've lined it up it is a bit skew with so it's important that you get that right so i'm just going to move that ever so slightly and hopefully the tape will still hold it in place just get it back on there and that's better because when you fold it it won't it won't line up properly on the front so make sure that it's square both ways okay now we're going to do our partial cut i'm going to move that for a second because i need to bring in my die cut machine so partial cutting electronic machines it has to hang out the edge and um, with this one and um you just put the top plate on so all your base plates go in as per normal okay bring that a bit closer all your base plates go in as normal and then what you want to do is you don't want to put any cuts between the two score lines that you've done so no cuts okay no cuts in this little section here so where these two score lines are has to be no cuts so what we're going to do is we're going to put our what i like to do is put my plate in so i'm going to cut this back bit first it's in the middle so i don't want that bit to cut now if i run that through the machine like that nothing's going to happen it won't cut because there's not enough pressure there's not enough plates so what you do is you put your plate in and i like to put mine in and get it to squash a little bit that's why i like manual so it's how it's held in place now but it's not fully in so now i can line up it's a bit too much pressure i can line up where that line is i'm gonna to have to stand up because i can't see because the light so where that line is there sorry there what am i doing I'm doing the back one aren't we so just get that score line lined up doesn't help with the shadows of the light get that plate going through there we go and make sure it's in the right place sorry about my hand there so what you've done is you've only cut that back end if i turn it over you'll see that only that back part has been cut nothing else has been cut because the top plate wasn't covering it now we need to cut this side so again we're going to put put it in that way and so our plate would go about that so just pick them all up so this is the one we just cut and that's the middle bit so we've got to avoid that middle bit where the crosses are line up your cardstock so it's completely on the line like that And then get it going make sure it's in the right place before you commit so once it goes through it's getting cut there we go that's through there take off the top plate and then it can slide back out like that so i'm going to just remove that it's in the way completely this gives me some space yay how exciting so what we've done is we've now removed the die and the tape like that and then you can see we've got two partial cuts and it's a little bit dirty so I'm just going to use a glue rubber just get that off and obviously you rub out your pencil lines and things like that 
So, now what you do, because this is the front of our card, is you fold back. So you're going to fold back the front like that. And this is why you had to square it up to get that completely in line. Otherwise it looks mismatched. Okay, if that was skew width, that would go off at an angle. And because it's being cut both ends and swinging, it wouldn't do anything. So with your paper up the right way, the short side comes backwards and the longer side comes forwards. Okay, like that. You're just making that there. Now, if your score lines that you did initially didn't come all the way down to your die cut, then you would just pop it back on the scoreboard and just score all the way down to the die like that. And it's always, can you see, I've gone very slightly inside of that line. That's a good thing to do because if it's back here, it won't work. You won't be able to get this fold over if you see what I mean because that will still be attached. So it's better to go over the line a little bit than miss it. So that's how you do partial cutting so you can see there. Now the reason I cut from the back as well is can you see die cuts have an edge. Okay they have a really neat edge and on the reverse you probably can't see it because of the pattern paper but that actually cups up and it's a rougher feel to the cut. So because I like it that way, because when I put my matting layer on there, I'm going to have that really nice white border which matches the outside of my card. So I don't have to do too much now. I just put a matting layer inside of there. And on the reverse side, where it's not very good, I just cut out the die again, because obviously a die cut in, so you've got your nice panel size there. And you just pop that back in. And it also finishes off the shape here, because you don't see the full shape. Yeah? Let me just show you again on the front you see the whole die shape but on the inside you don't okay so it's nice to put that on the right way because that's why we cut it out so that actually really shows you can you see that that's the bad edge and that's the good edge which you obviously probably know probably teaching you to suck eggs but there are newbies all the time so what you do then is you just glue this one into place and then you've got that really nice border on the inside as well as the outside when it's glued down. So that's how you do your um, die cut one. I'm going to show you how to do a 7x5 with a paper trimmer. So it's the same sort of principle, we're just not using a machine. And I can also give you the measurements for the 7x5 so that it um, makes it easier for you guys. So what we're going to do is seven obviously by five and we're doing that one inch cut again so we've got nine okay so we didn't want nine we wanted um seven so the reason we've got nine is because of the one inch so you've got to double it up so you're going to cut to nine by five and that means you'll end up with seven by five okay so half of nine is four and a half so just make a little mark at four and a half like that and then also make one at three and a half and then we go down here, three and a half, and four and a half, there. So we know where those lines are. Just bear with me, because I've left my um, trimmer miles away. I'll just go and grab that. That might as well have been on the moon. But I paused you, and I went and got it, thank goodness. So, <laughs> I had a coffee. No, I never really. So... We've got our cardstock here. Now this is going to be the front end because our pattern's that way. Okay, so that's the front end. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a one inch border because everything's easy with one inch. So just line up your cardstock one inch there and then come down your trimmer one inch. And then that makes everything really easy. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut to that three and a half inch score there. And then you're going to lift your trimmer so that you don't cut between three and a half and four and a half and then you continue down to six okay so continue down to six like that then spin your card around and then with your card at six on your trimmer here so line it up to the six mark there and then you're going to cut from one to four like that one to four then you're gonna you can either flip it over or you can just turn it around and you're gonna do this end now so you're coming in one inch and you're cutting again from one to four so it's leaving that border and then we've got to do the same thing we did before but we'll have to go backwards 
we're going to start it's start up here and because the uh, math has gone around the other way you can flip your card to make it the same so we can turn it over and cut from this side so if that makes it easy for you guys I'll do that so that you're getting the same measurements so you cut into that first score line so one to three and a half lift up your trimmer four and a half to six okay so you can see there we've got a cut there and we've got a cut there now we need to bring back the scoreboard because I only made little marks there and you don't actually have to do them it's just reminding you where to cut them right brought in my scoreboard so the easiest way to do it it'd probably be on the reverse because you with the shine of this you probably won't be able to see it so I'm going to flip it over and you can see the cut line there hopefully which is there so at the three and a half mark I'm going to just score down to that oops score down to that cut line and at the four and a half score down to that cut line and then again four and a half up and then three and a half up I'm also going to flip it over and do it on the other side because it always helps with the um, measuring of these there we go so now we've got our scores and we've got our cuts there's no cuts up through the middle here so what we do again with the with the front one is we fold it backwards like that and then this one we fold inwards so that comes in that way like that so now when I turn it over you've got your complete flip flap so it's really simple to do the mat on this if you want don't want to have a border is three by five inches okay so your mat is three by five and then cut down quarter of an inch if you want to do another one alternatively on the inside here you can write you know your message on there and put a bit of insert on there etc but i hope that all made sense guys um you can also write on the back and you can add a little panel there but the only thing is when it's closed you'll see part of the panel like that so if you wanted to hide it just on that small area but i think you might as well use this area so thanks for watching anyway and um, I'll see you again soon. I think there's only going to be one more in the swings and that's going to be a double swing. So that would be interesting. So wait for that one. See you again soon. Thanks guys. Bye.